The Solomon Islands have become an interesting place of myth and folklore. It's surrounded by stories of war, biblical gold, giants that roam the wild jungles and frequent UFO activity. Researchers, scientists and natives claim the islands are home to an abundance of traditions passed down through the generations of a remote yet alluring indigenous people. The Solomon Islands is a sovereign state located in Oceania. To the east of Papua New Guinea, the state includes six major islands and over 900 smaller islands. The capital, Hainara, is located on the island of Guadalcanal, which became a famous battleground between the US and Japanese soldiers in what is now known as the Solomon Islands Campaign of 1942 to 1945. And I do apologise if I'm not pronouncing any of these names correctly. I have listened to them how they are pronounced, but obviously with my accent it makes it terribly difficult to uh, pronounce some of these words. So I'll move on. Now, I'm going to go on to talk about the Solomon Island Giants, okay? Now, the remote islands were left undiscovered to the rest of the world and they were only inhabited by an indigenous people who had lived on the islands for thousands of years, okay? As more people explore these islands, captivating stories of their past are becoming increasingly popular. So I'm going to talk a bit now about the people and the culture of the Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands were thought to have been inhabited by at least 2000 BC before any archaeological re records began. Now bear in mind this is just what is documented, this is just what they lead us to believe. Who knows, who knows how long it's been inhabited for, but this is just what the narrative is, okay? The first settlers were thought to have been of the Austronesian language group before being succeeded by the Lapita people between 1200 and 800 BC who had arrived from Bismarck archipelago. The inhabitants of the islands led tribal lives and gained a famous reputation as headhunters and cannibals prior to the arrivals of the Europeans. Now this is important. 120 indigenous languages are spoken in the Solomon Islands. In 1568, a Spanish explorer by the name of Alvaro de Mendana became the first European to discover the islands navigating the oceans from Peru. And this is what he said, okay? After discovering the islands, Alvaro de Mendana named them the Islands of Solomon with the belief that he had found gold. And not just any gold, but the place where the biblical King Solomon obtained the gold for his temple in Jerusalem. Rumours of such an important find reached the explorers in other lands and in 1595 and 1606 more Spanish expeditions set out to uncover the, uncover the truth. The discoveries of gold reported by Mendana were never verified back then but in more recent times companies have managed to mine a large amount of gold from the islands, which is true. There is thought to be a substantial amount of gold still buried throughout the land. And, well, from my research, th there is. Now I'm going to talk a bit more about these Solomon Island Giants because this blew my mind, okay? Marius Byrayan lived and worked in the Solomon, lived and worked in the Solomon Islands as a helicopter pilot and an engineer before marrying a native. Okay, I think he went there in like 92 or 95, something like that. Um, he went over there and he's Australian. Um, and he went over there just because uh, I think he'd retired. 
and he went over there for a change just to do some flying on the island and obviously he, he, he fell in love with the island. So he learned more about the island and the indigenous people as well as the folklore surrounding them, okay? He learned of the Solomon Island giants which supposedly inhabit the caves throughout the islands. These giants were said to be over 10 feet tall with evidence that suggests that giants can grow much taller, which I've seen reports with them, some of them being 18 feet tall, which I'm going to be sharing. The surprising features of the Solomon Island giants are similar to other creatures around the world, like Bigfoot and the Mongolian Almas. They have very long black, brown or reddish hair, bulging double eyebrows, red eyes, flat noses and large mouths. They are thought to be three different species of giants the largest over 10 feet tall, with another being smaller, and the third smaller still, but still bigger than a human. It is linguistically ironic that the Solomon Islands people name their undiscovered to the modern world race of hominoids, the giants, as throughout history, including in the Bible and other prominent books, the same name has been used in other parts of the world to describe these huge, elusive, subterranean hominoids. Marius Boyrayon, in his book, Solomon Island Mysteries. Now, I've read this book, and this is why I'm, I'm sharing this, because the accounts in this book, they can't all be coincidence. Um, and it's not just giants. Uh, it talks about the cave systems, um, he talks about um, the native people said that they saw a, a, a giant snake, um, a, <coughs> excuse me, a dragon snake in the sky. And when Mario saw it, it turned out to be actually it was UFOs. Um, and he studied it, he stayed on the island. Um, and like I said, I've actually tried to look for this guy and you can't find him. But like, you, do, you, do, you do a Google search for him and it's not, it's not a white man that comes up. Okay, you'll find everything else apart from that picture that we originally got of him. Um, I came across it in another video. If I can link the video, um, I will in this video. But I, I'm not, honestly, I've tried to search and I cannot find it for the life of me. I cannot find it. And this is why it's leading on because of all the mind blowing stuff that I have found out in this book and from doing um, a little bit of investigation myself. It's no wonder because people have died. Um, somebody else discovered a giant and they've gone missing. Uh, one of Maurice's friends who worked there mysteriously died of cancer uh, 18 months into the project. Uh, I think he was the photographer. Um, yeah, like there's so much in this. I've had to pull myself out because, look, I'm, I'm not going down this alone. I'm telling you, if I'm going down, I'm taking everybody down with me through this. So this is why I'm doing this video. Um, if anybody else has got any more information about this please please share it with me let's go into this together because uh it's a lot for one person it really is this is a lot and like i say like i'm not going to put it all in this video because nobody else is talking about it so i don't really want to put myself out there on my own talking about this while i've discovered well i will be sharing bits of it but the rest no like i'm gonna wait I'm going to keep it in mind. I'm going to share where the information is and then everybody else can go and they can go and look for themselves, you know, um, and I'll be there, but I'm not going to do it on my own because I say it's dangerous talking about these kind of things uh, on the internet. And, you know, where are these people that I've spoke out? You can't find them. I managed to find one guy on the internet. Uh, it's an old video and his name's Joseph Jeppe and he's the guy uh, if you read the book, which I'll link the book as well, he met this guy in the jungle, well, in um, Guadalcanal, and he became really good friends with him, and there's a video about him speaking um, about the giants and everything in uh, Guadalcanal, so I'm going to link that video as well. <laughs> I will link everything, okay, everything, so everybody else can, you know what, take it, don't take my word for it, and go and do your own research, because it's all there, you know, it's all there. An interesting thing about this as well is um, Marius, when he was doing some investigating, um, he was telling the people, you know, look, what you're seeing isn't a giant dragon snake because it was responsible for the abductions of people. Like, I'm not joking, like, these things, and it's, 
there's so much evidence to back it up. Uh, scientists have actually gone there. They, they know they know that there's uh, all these different races of joints because they've took ex uh, they've done experiments and they've took DNA samples. Um, so you know, we it's being covered up, and even today, it's still going on today. There's been giant wars. There's been there was a book written by the natives. Well, it was a guy in the town which is Guadalcanal. Um, he was sick of everybody like being so distraught by not what, what is happening to them and their family members by all these things and um, they drew pictures of aliens in this book now they'd never they didn't even know what an alien was so when Marius is trying to investigate what's going on and he tells them look us white men you know in in, in this part of the world believe that it's aliens that are behind driving these vehicles on about the UFOs with the lights and everything. Um, like I say, I will link all the information so you can go and see for yourself. Um, so he tells them, look, these are UFOs. We think, you know, there's aliens driving them, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as he started describing them, the natives were like, there's a book in a museum in town um, with drawings of what he's describing. So Marius obviously went and he found the book and the drawings he said was the most beautifully drawn, like hand drawn, descriptive drawn pictures you could ever see. He was like, like looking at an alien off the TV. And these are people that are like native people in a jungle, do you see? So you, there's, there's that much, you can't even call it a coincidence. It's way past a coincidence. So um, I'm gonna con continue reading. The Solomon Island Giants have become a topic for further research, okay? Often led by Marius himself, as I said, he, he literally made it his life purpose to find out what was going on. Because he couldn't believe it at first. He questioned himself, which every, as everybody would and should, you know. So he writes in this book that some of the giants were killing and stealing humans from their villages. And he speaks of how a huge rogue killer giant attacks the uh, indigenous people. Now, I, have, I might do a short... Um, playlist of these stories just for people that can't buy the book or can't get hold of the book so um, I might do a little playlist of these stories so just let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see because they are oh my god they are uh, like amazing um, and again that's what pff, it's blew my mind it has and I want you to experience it as well it's amazing Okay, the monstrous giant was an elusive and cunning creature that stalked its, victim, stalked its victims and often crept around the village at night to seek its meals. And Marius writes this in the book. And he often goes on to explain that many warriors had died trying to slay the giant before villages had to be moved to other parts of the island in order to protect their people. But there's actually giants on all the islands and he puts this in the book. Uh, the other islands have got different names for their giants, but yeah, it's like, it, it, it's like they couldn't escape it anywhere, okay? The Solomon Island giants are said to have social structures and they are possibly, there are possibly thousands of them which inhabit Guadalcanal to this day, to this day, okay? They use complex cave systems to pass from one side of the island to the other without ever having to see daylight. So, you know, I'm telling you, and, and, and they've always been known as the stone, uh, the builders, but they used to build with wood, you know, but that doesn't mean to say that they didn't build with stone, but that's what these natives said that they built with wood, but that might have been like what they've seen them living in. You know, I don't know, they could still, because you know, we don't know why they built the stones in the first place, why they put stones where they put them, you know, that's a big debate, isn't it, going on. you just got to stay open and, and trust your instincts, you know, and, definitely feel into everything that you uh, feel in your body because that's your intuition you know and you'll know so also it's worth mentioning that between 1942 and 1945 Japanese and US forces engaged in heavy fighting on the islands which became known as the Solomon Islands campaign okay and there's loads of documents uh, documentation about this there's footage and everything and during this conflict, Japanese forces would experience first-hand encounters with the Solomon Island Giants, okay? They reported seeing creatures around 10 to 15 feet tall, which would sometimes come charging at units of soldiers. Their bullets had little effect on them. Well, they're not going to if they're that big, and like they're meant to be supernatural, they can make themselves disappear and all sorts. 
While suffering from attacks in daylight, soldiers also had a hard time sleeping as they could hear their fellow comrades wailing through the night as the giants launched launch more attacks. The cannibalistic nature of the giants struck fear into the hearts of the Japanese infantry. The giants of the Solomon Islands are common known, common known and it is common knowledge to the locals. But along with stories of following encounters and sightings of footprints, there could be more truth to the stories than we realise. As I was saying, there is so much and it can't all be a conspiracy. You know, and it's worth noting as well that obviously the Japanese you know I'm only going off from what we're told. I don't know this for a fact. Um, you know, but back then, um, they thought it was like unworthy to um, surrender and they all surrendered, they didn't battle. So, you know, that's worth noting as well. Like, why was they so scared? And they did. And a lot of them, I think there's a report of two Japanese soldiers, they went and hid in the hills and it was found in like, I think it was like the 70s or something. <laughs> you imagine that? that? That's how terrified they must be. So, you know, as I said, it's all here, it's all, and it's all there for you to find as well. I'm not, as I say, I'm not exaggerating about anything. There's no need to exaggerate. You know, some people exaggerate about everything and they don't even link anything to what they're saying. But there's pictures. I'm going to put newspaper um, reports as well. So don't forget to stay on till the end of this because I'm going to be doing a little montage of uh, newspaper pictures, what I found, because it's just going to be go going in too long if I report it all. So, yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very, very much for being here for this video. Thank you for being a part of the truth, finding out the truth and sharing the truth. And, you know, stay open, be safe, and yeah, stay curious, that's all I've got to say. Thank you, I'm sending you lots of love, lots of light. Don't forget to put your opinion in the comments, please. I need to know what everybody else thinks of this. Have you ever heard about this before? Um, you know, uh, have you looked into it? Do you know anybody that's been um, to the Solomon Islands, you know? Because uh, there's been loads of stories about loads of things going on there. Um, so it'd be interesting to speak to somebody that's actually been, or somebody that lived on the island, or, you know, if you know anything about Marius, please, please let me know, because it is, it is absolutely driving me insane. So yeah, thank you very much. Bye.